Welcome back to the channel. We're out here on a really, really nasty day. It's super windy and we're getting like a wintry mix. We're sitting right at freezing. So the temp has came up quite a bit compared to the negative temperatures we've been seeing. And that is what happened to my copper tubing. My copper tubing up top had froze and popped and basically burst out the side it had gotten frozen up so that was a major failure i have a lot of useful copper left i threw this copper coil outside because i didn't know what to do with it inside the greenhouse is an absolute mess you can see where it actually blew out so where that had cracked on my copper it was basically up on the top part of my stack and it was closer to the wall there and it is where the water basically leveled off and wouldn't siphon back down into the system. So I did not take that into account when I was building that, leading me to an epic failure on that and a loss of a lot of copper. I'm gonna have to untwist some of it and I will cut that and save what I can. And I've also got this large piece of copper that is still on this tank. And that is the 3 8 copper. I also have, oh, I got another fitting to connect this copper. So I wanted to, you can hear that wind and rain and snow hitting the greenhouse, it's so loud. It's like waves and sheets. So I got this quarter inch copper tubing. I picked that up to use as a water pump system and basically a water heater. So I'm gonna be taking this 600 gallon per hour pump off of this system and I'm going to be using a 300 gallon per hour pump and I'm going to downsize quite a bit. That is going to screw right into my pecs where this fitting did. So this was basically where my old compression fitting there was. So this is the new compression fitting for our quarter inch copper. That's just an experiment. The problem is, is that it wasn't holding those high temperatures for very long. It was bringing itself down and leveling out to about 80 degrees. So bringing 40 or 50 degree water from overnight temps, sometimes it's 60 plus with our Jean Payne running on a fully sunny day. So it was leveling out from 45 to about 80 degrees, which is an awesome transfer. But I want to see if I can get some better. And now that my system had broken, I had to dismantle it. I'm basically going to build the same type of contraption out of this. I just have to take into account the actual water flow and leveling it back into the overflow tank. And this back plate back here is basically all that we have is some thin gauge steel plating. So I have to take another steel plate and basically sandwich that. I have a small gap of air that's going to seal up and provide better insulation than it is now. I really didn't take that into account and I didn't think about how that would affect it on a night that I didn't burn a fire, you know. I didn't even run it that day. It just had water residually sitting in the cold oil and even if I burn a fire or not it started to get a little thermo siphoning effect so it was suctioning out the water because it had water in it and it cooked it to a steam and it forced it out drawing other water up into the tube so that really affected it by allowing it to have hot spots and spots where it was dead it wouldn't have any gravity feed and since it was hooked up to a pump it wasn't flowing correctly so that was a very interesting experiment it worked for a good week or two and then i had some really really cold temperatures and that just blew a hole in the system literally so i've got a whole lot of new ideas coming and this is the next new idea here so this is a heat exchanger all brand new fins i'm going to leave that in the box for the most part this is going to be my next little experiment and that little fan up there is going to power it i'm basically just going to mount it right in the middle or maybe i'll get a fan to fit this was made for a water to air heat exchanger so it's basically just like a small radiator it's a nice little heat exchanger and i'm not exactly sure what i paid for this i cannot remember i'm going to drop the link to this heat exchanger in the comments below or in the description of this video so my plan is to take all of this copper and basically bend it around some object. I'm gonna use maybe five to six inch PVC, probably six inch, but I figured if I had five inch PVC, I could get a really firm grab on the actual stack itself because the copper wanted to coil in. As to where if I bent it on a six inch PVC, I don't know if it would hold as tight. I might have 
gaps in between and that's not what I want. This was just kind of a crazy little experiment and it worked decently well until I ended up ripping the copper up and twisting it all up. So this is going to be recycled. I will recycle all the copper I possibly can and the copper from my last water heating tubing. So I'm going to get that copper hooked up and I got to figure out a way to hook this copper to this copper. I will have to get myself some fittings there and basically hard line that in just like all the rest of the stuff. So I wanted to share this update on my failures and what happened and why it happened and what's working for me. And there's just always experiments going on out here. So we've got a lot of cool stuff coming. I'm gonna end up mounting this. I plan on having this mounted up here in a fashion kind of like this, basically lines running in and out. And next winter, I probably won't be using my back door here. So I'm just basically gonna dedicate it to lines and all that good stuff. That is why my last system failed because I was trying to make it so I could walk around it, walk over it, and I'll basically just hard line the next one and use it in the winter, take it down in the summertime. And that's just the reality of what I'm gonna have to do there. So that's not too bad given the circumstances. All of these systems have been working wonderfully and I'm very excited to have this piece of equipment here. I think this is going to be a very interesting experiment. I'm gonna throw the cardboard back on here. Just protect that nicely. Kind of set that back in there. I've just got lots of ideas and I really wanted to share all this before I actually put it together because you guys have great ideas too and I really like to hear the feedback on stuff and that's kind of why I do things the way I do. I'm not just bringing a finished product. I'm not just putting everything together and saying, hey, look at this cool item. I like to break it down, run through the process and how I'm gonna do it. And usually I try and do it as cheap as possible, but I couldn't really find a cheap heat exchanger. So it was just happenstance. So I ended up picking that up and I'm kind of excited to have it. Can't wait to get it going. So we've had the greenhouse so warm lately that our actual elderberries are popping here. We've got tons of elderberries coming off there. Our hyssops coming back for us. I don't see any buds on our cold hardy kiwis there yet, but got lots of potted up kales and all types of stuff like that. So that's kind of why I do things the way I do. All of these kale, you can see they're starting to yellow. They're competing for the actual nutrients in the soil because this is probably one of the last beds that doesn't have a whole lot of compost on it. So I'm slowly transplanting all those out and I'm going to spread them out also. There's hundreds of plants there and I can make hundreds of plants for our farmer's market. We've got a lot, a lot of stuff to do before the springtime comes. It's coming sooner than later. So we are starting to kind of get in that mindset of where we're propagating things, taking grape cuttings, elderberry cuttings, all types of cuttings, uh, Asian pears, apples, pears, some currants, jasta berries, all types of stuff. So we're trying to get all of our cuttings taken, throw them in the fridge for a day or two, and then they're basically coming out to the large greenhouse where it's the warmest. So having this heat in the greenhouse is very, very valuable. He being able to start a small little fire here, not a whole lot to it, just a bunch of coals. And I will just throw one little piece of our old recycled pallets here. I got tons of pieces of pallets. I've been cutting those up, using those as firewood. So nice hardwood pallets. They work very well to keep a good coal. We've got a lot of heat coming off there. So I really look forward to hearing everybody's feedback on my failure, what I can do to avoid that. I mean, next time with the next copper tubing, I'm basically going to make sure it flows and it will drain all the way out. So I should be able to avoid that situation. And I'm looking forward to your guys' opinion on the next new system, because I want to do some type of heat exchange system and then I'll still have hot water running out and I may just have a hot water pump running for the time being. I don't know what I'm gonna do with that small copper tubing yet. I'm basically going to wrap it up and try and hook it onto this pump right now. Once that smaller pump I ordered gets here, I'll be able to flow a lot less water and I should be able to keep that small copper coil 
basically within like a four to six inch gap and then I'll still have room to put larger copper tubing also so possibly running two systems off of just one little stack here just kind of multiplying all of the heat that I can put into the greenhouse I'd really like to thank you all for watching this video sticking around on the channel where we're trying to just heat our greenhouses as cheaply as possible